From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization, keeping its age-old culture maintained. Today, the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I am your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's culture, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. India's mission to uplift its women in diverse domains, from politics to sports, education to entertainment and business, has hit full throttle. In a huge development, the Indian government has pulled out all the stops by greenlighting a bill that grants women a 33% reservation in parliament. This stride is not just a drop in the ocean, it's a giant leap towards levelling the playing field. This progressive move signals a bright path ahead where women's voices and contributions are poised to shine even brighter on the national stage. India has embarked on a remarkable journey towards empowering its women who have become an indomitable force across various fields. Whether it's politics, sports, education, entertainment or business, Women are now making their presence felt in every sector. But the journey towards self-reliance and recognition started long ago when women played pivotal roles in making significant yet often overlooked decisions within their families. Today, she matters and her role holds significance in every aspect of life, from crafting garments and managing households to mentoring as influential leaders and even governing the nation. Sports, you are talking about media, you are talking about artists, you are talking about entrepreneur, just name it. Women are all around there. If you can look into the strength of the school, earlier the strength of boys and girls were, you know, differentiating as such. But now it is, moral is the same. So once we address the equality, of course the term of equity will come, but maybe in due course of time. Although women are prominently visible as leaders and contributors to the nation, many still face setbacks due to limited access to social and political opportunities. To rectify this imbalance and ensure equitable representation in Parliament, the Indian government has successfully passed a long-awaited bill. This legislation grants women a 33% reservation in the Parliament of India. The bill, originally proposed in 1996, had encountered multiple postponements by various governments. However, on September 21, 2023, it finally received approval with 100% vote in favour. I think women uh, today have a stronger voice, definitely in society. They definitely have a stronger voice uh, in, uh, in business as well. We see so many uh, CEOs now being, uh, and big corporates being headed by women. So in that respect, yes, in the last decade, I think there are more and more women who are coming to the forefront in, uh, in stronger roles. And bills such as these are definitely going to help, whether it's a woman's representation in society, or whether it's in politics, or whether it's in business. Governments have introduced numerous policies and schemes aimed at improving the financial and academic status of women and ensuring their safety. Initiatives like Women's Helplines, the Beti Bachao Beti Padhao Scheme, Working Women Hostel Scheme and the One Stop Center Scheme have all played crucial roles in this regard. As per the Periodic Labor Force Survey, India's labor force participation rate went gradually from 22.9% in the years 2017-18 to 18 to 29.4% in 2021-22. to 22. There are a lot of policies I mentioned before also that uh, there are a lot of policies to promote business in women. So, Gruha Udyog is one area. There are so many bank loans and schemes that are available for women. A major policy that has been brought up is for women's safety. So, the she police was earlier not there. Uh, similarly, now there is a helpline where they can call. I believe it is 181 where any female can call up and reach out. The change and uh, the improvement is required 
particularly in the areas of promoting them in business uh, supporting them uh, how they can come up and be more independent women believe that the past reservation bill will not only elevate their status in society but also provide them with the opportunity to explore various career possibilities some acknowledge that change will be gradual as women's empowerment is more about societal acceptance than just implementing laws in their favor as far as laws are concerned almost all laws are favoring women and uh, aiming towards equality but there are loopholes as far as implementation is concerned and more of a social acceptance so i think uh, that change will come slowly india's journey toward women's empowerment began with jawahar lal nehru the first prime minister who granted women voting rights giving them the power to choose their leaders over time successive governments have introduced many welfare schemes and laws for women's upliftment but there's still much ground to cover india a land of rich culture and diversity has always strived to keep ties between communities intact and cultivate feelings of brotherhood in society today in our show we will walk you through some stories of instances of cultural fusion and communal harmony developing in society let's have a look ganesh chaturthi also regarded as the ganesh utsav festival was celebrated recently with great devotion and fervor across indian states and around the world The 10-day festival marks the rebirth of the most revered Hindu god Lord Sri Ganesh often referred to by different names like Siddhi Vinayak, Ekdant, Lambodar and Ganpati. The elephant-headed deity Lord Ganpati is a god of wisdom and prosperity and is traditionally worshipped prior to making important decisions and deals of great value. The festivity brings true joy to the lives of people as it unveils multiple stories that narrate the tale of love and harmony within communities as Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians join hands to celebrate the festivity of brotherhood. Meet a Mumbai man, Taufik Babu Tambe, who despite having roots in Islam, brought Ganpati to his home this year to celebrate the Ganesh festival with his entire family following traditional methods and rituals of worship with devotion mai jaha lalbag mein duty pe tha to wahan maine mannat manga tha to meri mannat puri hui iske liye maine ganpati bithaya aur pure bharat ko mai ye karna chahta hu ki hum sab ek hai aur hum sab ke tyohar mein jaave aur wo sab hamare tyohar mein aave yahi meri sabse निम्र विनंती इन श्रीनगर सिटी ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर वेयर द गणेश चतुर्थी फेस्टिवल वाज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड विद द कंसर्टेड एफर्ट बाय द लोकल कम्युनिटीज इन द वैली एंड वाज सेलिब्रेटेड विद ग्रेट फर्वर फॉर कंसेक्यूटिव डेज अगर हम आज के ही त्यौहार की बात करें तो हमारे जो मुस्लिम भाई लोग हैं वो भी आए थे वो भी हमसे मिले बैठते हैं हमारे साथ एक साथ हम हर फेस्टिवल को मनाते हैं तो ऐसा नहीं है वो भाईचारा हमेशा कंटिन्यू रहता है चाहे जो भी कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज हो दैट्स नॉट दैट्स नॉट द बैरियर इन बिटवीन इट हमेशा भाईचारा कंटिन्यू रहता है With the support of the local community the festival continued for days echoing the valley with the chanting of Ganpati Bappa Morya as devotees offered flowers and eatables to the god and performed other rituals in the temple Following the chanting of mantras and slogans the festival ended with people in large numbers gathered to bid farewell to Lord Ganpati by immersing his clay idols in the river जितने भी लोग थे सबका सपोर्ट रहा जितनी भी कम्युनिटीज थी उन्होंने भी मतलब बधाइयाँ दी और हमारे साथ शोल्डर टू शोल्डर खड़े रहे मतलब इस फंक्शन को पूरा खड़े करने में सबका ही हाथ है Several other places across Indian states like Gujarat Surat organized Maha Aarti on the occasion of Ganesh Utsav which was joined by people from all communities who all together performed aarti religiously at the pandals. 
भारत में आ, सभी धर्मों को एक अच्छे से वो एक दिया गया है मान सम्मान दिया गया है तो ये आज साबित होता है यहाँ पे आकर कि सभी धर्म के जो लोग हैं एक साथ एक इकट्ठा मिलकर जो आरती किया है उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा संदेश हमारे भारत देश के प्रजावासी को मिला है Stories like these are true inspirations to mankind as they foster an unbreakable bond among communities and society and nourish the feelings of brotherhood which also motivates people to stand for each other by sharing happy and sad moments of life together. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Delhi based artist from Kolkata Shubhra Chand painted Madhuga's face with pure gold foil. Shubhra who has a doctorate in wall painting has been deeply associated with tribal art for over two decades. She was born and brought up in Kolkata and currently residing in Delhi. Shubhra is holding a solo exhibition in Kolkata and she painted Madhuga's face as her signature art. India won their first gold of the Asian Games with their men's 10 meter air rifle team on target. India's shooting trio Divyan Singh Panwar, Rudrangsh Patil and Ashwarya Pratap Singh Tomar clinched gold in the men's 10 meter air rifle team shooting event with a score of 1893.7. India's gold came with the added bonus of a world record beating the previous marks set by China's men last month. Tomar also won the bronze medal in the individual men's 10 meter air rifle event. Some 12400 athletes from 45 nations are competing for 481 gold medals across a huge program of 40 sports at the games in the eastern Chinese city which were delayed by a year due to COVID-19. India's first green hydrogen fuel cell bus was launched in New Delhi to bolster green mobility. The bus was flagged off by Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri at the iconic India Gate War Memorial. Vehicles with hydrogen fuel cells in which hydrogen mixes with oxygen to produce water and energy to power a battery can refuel in minutes and have a much longer range than battery electric vehicles. Last year New Delhi approved a 174.9 billion rupees incentive plan for the fuel which is made using renewable energy and without producing greenhouse gases. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set a target to produce 5 million tons of green hydrogen by 2030. Moving on. In the heart of Mumbai's bustling Dharavi slum A remarkable story of resilience and aspiration has unfolded. A 15-year-old young girl turned model, Malisha Kharwa, born and raised amidst adversity, has emerged as a beacon of inspiration for countless others. Against all odds, she has transformed her life's trajectory from the narrow lanes of Dharavi to the glamorous runways of the fashion modeling world. Now she became an overnight sensation after being selected as the face of a luxury skincare brand. Let's have a look. In famous as one of the largest slums in the world, Dharavi is located in the heart of Mumbai. Dharavi slum is well known for being densely populated. A teenager from an underprivileged community in Dharavi has become an overnight sensation after being chosen as the face of a luxury skincare brand. At just 15 years old, Malisha's remarkable journey has seen her rise from the slums of Mumbai to gracing the covers of renowned fashion magazines including Vogue and Cosmopolitan. Most recently, Forest Essentials, an Indian skincare company, appointed her as their brand ambassador. All due to a chance encounter three years ago, when an inquisitive American tourist wandered into the slum and gave her the breakthrough she needed. 
my life uh, is means uh, i feel i'm very happy of myself that uh, before i used to stay stay in a hut but now i have a nice house for myself and now i will take a very big house for my family on rent and i'm uh, i'm excited for that once lived with her family in a waterfront slum in a hut mit on a shoreline strewn with garbage has now moved up the property ladder to a rented one room apartment with its own toilet and running water she has recently been chosen as a face of forest essentials an indian skin care brand for their teenage product campaigns the young model has earned a massive fan following on social media more than 318000 followers where she posts snippets from her personal and professional life and tries to inspire others malisha hopes these successes will be a springboard to a career as a model or a dancer though she intends to concentrate on her studies until she finishes school now i mean stand standard so because of my study i have to cancel many many shows because i'm in school so after uh, after my 12th i will start my modeling continuously in march a luxury indian cosmetics brand forest essentials partly owned by l'oreal chose malisha as the face of its yuvati campaign celebrating young indian women Her breakthrough reflects gradually changing attitudes the world over where advertising, pop culture and films glorify fair skin as an ideal of beauty. Malisha has become a social media influencer using the hashtag the princess from the slum in some of her posts. And now we bring you some of the major stories from recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of world in focus a pair of f35a lockheed martin fighter jets have landed on a highway for the first time military officials hailed the development as a step that would increase survivability during the conflict by reducing vulnerable time spent on the ground The two Royal Norwegian Air Force aircraft landed in Tervo in central Finland as a part of a military exercise. Immediately after landing, refueling was carried out with the engines running, known as hot pit refueling, before the planes took off again. Finland, which joined NATO in April, shares 810-mile border with Russia. The Nordic nation plans to buy 64 F-35 fighter jets from Lockheed Martin. In the heart of Rome, a city where history echoes at every corner, one thing truly captures the spirit of this eternal place, the Vespa. It's not just a way to get around, it's a symbol of Rome's soul, drawing people from around the world to experience its enduring charm. Tourists like Jeff Smith and Preston Petrosi, who came all the way from Texas, couldn't resist the allure of the Vespa. Riding on these stylish scooters, they felt like celebrities as people waved, whistled, and snapped pictures. For Preston, it was about feeling the cobblestone streets, connecting with locals, and immersing himself in Italy's spirit. The name Vespa means wasp in Italian and is a note to the noise the engine makes. The first Vespa was produced by the Piaggio company in 1946. After the Second World War when Italy had its aircraft industry severely restricted, Piaggio turned its former expertise from making fighter jets into constructing the Vespa, a scooter available to the masses that incorporated a unified body part around an engine. Piaggio is now the largest manufacturer of two-wheeled vehicles in Europe and has plants in Italy, India and Vietnam. Checkerboard dominated Versace's catwalk at Milan Fashion Week with designer Donatella Versace serving up the spirit on dresses and suits for women's wardrobes next spring. 
Models wore collarless jackets and short feminine dresses in pastel colors as well as boxy satin jackets paired with billowy shorts in Friday night show. There were also denim outfits, skirt suits in darker black and white tones as well as shiny evening dresses. Accessories consisted of flat ballerina shoes and hair bows. In show notes, the designer described her spring-summer 2024 line as fresh and graphic. Famous fashion faces including models Kendall Jenner, Gigi Hadid and Claudia Schiffer featured in the show. And now we take you to the culturally rich city Bhubaneswar, where the exciting tourism fair took place right in the heart of this magnificent city. The tourism fair was an attempt to uphold the multi-dimensional aspect of incredible India. The fair was held to encourage tourism among the travel community. So whether you are a fearless explorer, a nature lover or simply looking to relax on beautiful beaches, Odisha has something special in store for you. India remains one of the most ethnically diverse countries in the world. Bhubaneswar, also known as the city of temples, is an ancient city in eastern India that is a thriving center for art and culture in the state of Odisha. Recently, in a bid to boost tourism among the travel fraternity and travel enthusiast of Odisha, Blue Eye India Private Limited, an established name in the field of tourism promotion in India, hosted a three-day National Tourism Fair 2023 in Bhubaneswar. This three-day travel trade show was organized by the Ministry of Tourism. Exhibitors from Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh put their stalls at the tourism fair. Tourist को जो यहाँ footfall बढ़ा है, उसका दो तीन चीजें main कारण हैं सर। उसका एक तो ये है कि यहाँ पे जो साफ सफाई है सर, और यहाँ पे जो tourism के लिए जो steps लिए गए हैं, बढ़ावा दिया गया है यहाँ पे, सारे infrastructures हैं, जो हमारे roads हैं, वो काफी अच्छे हैं सर, और यहाँ पे tourist destinations भी काफी अच्छी तरह से manage हो रहा है, और यहाँ पे जो रहने के भी जो options हैं, यहाँ पे बहुत सारे hotels नए खुल गए हैं, five star options से लेके budget category तक, जो कि tourist लोगों के लिए बहुत ही अच्छा option दे रहा है। the government of Odisha has taken various steps from time to time to promote tourism by pronouncing progressive policies on tourism. The demand for tourism has changed as a result of the travel industry's tremendous rise. Over time, there has also been a rise in demand for stays. The tourism sector has grown manifold with the introduction of new and innovative products and experiences. It is recognized as a major instrument of employment creation, livelihood improvement and inclusive growth. Tourism development के लिए उड़ीसा में असीम scope है, unlimited opportunities are there. हमारे पास 18 wildlife sanctuary है, दो national park है, हमारे पास मिलिपाल में project tiger है, और हमारे पास विदरकनी का में project crocodile है, जहाँ पे जो पूरे दुनिया में ऐसे दो तीन जगह पे हैं एक ऑस्ट्रेलिया में है और एक वितरकनिका में है सो हमारे पास अट्रैक्शंस की कमी नहीं है दिस थ्री डे एक्सिबिशन आल्सो शोकेस्ड न्यू बिजनेस ओरिजिन फॉर फर्दर इंप्रूवमेंट ऑफ ट्रैवल ट्रेड एक्टिविटीज इन द कंट्री द टूरिज्म फेयर इज नॉट जस्ट टू अट्रैक्ट ट्रेड बायर्स एंड सेलर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस सेक्टर्स बट आल्सो टू ब्रिंग अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ट्रैवलर्स सीकिंग द बेस्ट पैकेजेस फॉर होटल्स एंड टूर्स इंडीड द टूरिज्म फेयर इन ओडिशा टूरिज्म इंडस्ट्री ब्रॉड टुगेदर द लोकल ट्रैवल इंडस्ट्री ट्रैवल एंथुजियास एंड अदर एसोसिएटेड बिजनेसेस अंडर वन रूफ And lastly, we take you to Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir, popularly known for its shimmering scenic beauty, is now taking a leap to promote its age-old cultural legacy through a number of events and public gathering programs. This time, Srinagar's Tego Hall witnessed a chunk of people gathered to watch the Sufi and folk music festival Shashrang with an aim to encourage local folk artists. Let's have a look. 
Sufism has long remained a part of Kashmir's rich cultural heritage and age-old traditions. The Sufi folk music festival titled Shashrang, organized in the heart of Srinagar city, was a perfect event showcasing the fusion of Kashmiri melodies and Sufi soulfulness. The event held at Tagore Hall in collaboration with JNK Academy of Art, Culture and Languages drew a large number of spectators and music lovers from around the Union Territory. You understand that the culture uh, and the legacy of India is not 75 years old. Uh, likewise, the culture of Jammu and Kashmir is not 75. We, like the rest of the country, are centuries old. So therefore, to keep alive this cultural legacy and keep alive this heritage, it is important that today's function, this is a shrang, a very beautiful function, a Sufi and folk musical festival, this platform provides for that cultural legacy and that cultural heritage to keep alive and to keep those artists and to keep the next generation uh, legacy or wo rich cultural heritage transmit karne mein hame uh, sahulat hoti hai. You saw that a lot of people, a lot of people from the general public as well as artists and consumers of art participated in overwhelming numbers. Or you also saw that young artists, budding artists ko bhi mauka diya gaya, platform diya gaya. The hall reverberated with praise and accolades for the artists as they took the audience on an odyssey of Sufi music and Kashmiri Ruhaniyat. For youths, it was an opportunity to indulge themselves in the age-old artistic culture of Kashmir and visit their roots. Program is to हमें चाहिए कि इस लेवल के प्रोग्राम करें जिसमें सारे तबके के लोग हों जितनी भी यहां तरह-तरह की मौसी के चाहे गोजरी है डोगरी है पंजाबी है इन सब को लेके अगर हम चलेंगे तो एक खूबसूरत गुलदस्ता बन जाएगा तो इस ऐसे प्लेटफार्म पे अगर हमें प्रोग्राम करने का मौका मिलता है तो हमें इसको अप्रिशिएट करना चाहिए और ऐसे प्रोग्राम्स बार-बार होने चाहिए यहां पर The artists performing at the event believed it was a blessing for them to have received a chance to promote the Kashmiri heritage and inspire youth to revive the cultural arts of the land. A new era of progress, peacefulness and prosperity has dawned on Kashmir. The enthusiastic participation of the audiences and the artists further validate the freedom and relief the people of Kashmir have experienced after the abrogation of Article 370. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha and it's a goodbye from the entire production team. Yeah.